All right, so here's my initial layout of this single zone uh, boiler system. So we're missing quite a bit of pieces here, but I like to start out with an initial layout and kind of sort of lay things out how I'd like to see them, how it's going to work out, the position of all the parts. Uh, this helps a lot before you start connecting things together and you realize later something's not going to work. So uh, a couple things to point out. Um, like I said, there's definitely some missing parts in here, the uh, shutoffs for, for the manifold. But with this one, I'm actually just trying to figure out my overall uh, width of this panel because the customer only has so much room to work with. Uh, in the event that he did not have enough room this way, um, we could turn some of this stuff up and, and uh, reorganize it. But this layout's going to work. I want to keep it as simple and streamlined as possible. Um, so we also have a lot of blank space here, which is totally fine because he's actually going to mount this to the wall where in a mechanical room he could he could put other items there as well. Um, he is going to need an outlet for to plug the boiler in. And I actually have a Wi-Fi controller that we could also mount uh, there as well. So this is going to work out real good. One thing I just want to point out as well that I had to kind of keep in mind on this one, I'm just using um, brass nipples for the connections since there's only really two here. So it's it's not worth uh, getting press fittings and all that. And just, it just it just adds more uh, points that could possibly leak. So um, that's one thing. And the other thing is this secondary sensor that I use on all the systems for with Navian boilers. Um, this sensor actually you can change a setting inside the, the boilers programming so that it will be monitoring the actual temperature um, of wherever the sensor is placed. I'm going to I'm going to place it here. And what this does is if you set the boiler to say uh, 125 degrees, that's what's actually going to be circulating uh, in this loop. The internal sensor is where it's measuring that. Uh, 125 degrees so it knows that it's outputting 125 degrees um, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're getting 125 degrees into your zone so what I do is I mount this sensor somewhere after the primary loop uh, somewhere on the on the secondary and then I tell the program to look at this sensor and actually make sure this is what's um, determining whether you're getting 125 degrees. So the boiler may actually have to output 130, 135, um, because it's also getting return water, which is cooler, which is coming back in here, going through the boiler to be reheated, um, as well as some, you know, uh, skipping through here. And basically uh, that's just how, you know, that's a whole different uh, video talking about primary and secondary. But essentially the point of the sensor is to make sure that you're really getting your true temperature you think you are out into your zone. Um, so what I had to do is, even though I could have used a smaller nipple here to reduce the size of all of this, I have to just make sure that by the time I thread all of this in, this sensor still has enough room to lay right here flat on this pipe to be able to monitor the temperature of this. Um, you know, you also have to keep in mind, you won't necessarily use all of these threads up when you screw this in. That That's just how this works. You know, you might come up to a little over halfway so I could maybe go with one size smaller nipple but not worth the risk and it really doesn't doesn't it's, we're losing maybe another half inch by going up with this size so now that we have our basic layout figured out now we could actually go ahead and start assembling some of the parts that are going to be installed onto this boiler system so we come over here to the bench where we have all of our parts laid out and what I do is I sort of organize everything just kind of get everything in my head straight of how I want everything to, to go together as well here. Um, and we could start threading some things together. And I sort of do it in, I guess, an assembly line sort of style where I get all my pieces together that I possibly can thread over here on the bench um, by using the vise as well and some wrenches. And then once everything is assembled that I can ahead of time, then we come over to the boiler and start installing everything and, and mounting everything.
so we have all of our components now threaded and attached to the boiler itself. Um, we have the primary manifold on, we have the air separator, we have the hot and cold domestic uh, shutoff and service valves, as well as the heating service valves. Um, we have the backflow preventer installed. I actually also went ahead and hooked in the Ethernet cable for the Wi-Fi controller. So this is the cable that connects inside here. It actually connects to one of the spare clips that they have available here. You run that down and just out here and that'll, that'll go right to the Wi-Fi unit. Um, I've also installed my secondary temperature sensor that I was describing before that's tucked away right under here and just zip tight on. And then usually what I do is I wrap this with some uh, heat tape just to be able to make sure it's uh, secure just in case anything ever happened to zip ties. Um, and I ran that up here and I just need to terminate the sensor's wires into the temperature sensor um, spot. And that's where we are right now. So all we need to do is actually connect our um, circulator, which we also have ready to go right here. The only reason I don't have that on right now is because I'm going to actually trim the panel board to the width that we actually need it. It's a little bit wider than it needs to be, so we're going to trim that down and uh, we'll move on to the next step. All right, uh, excuse the mess of tools, but I just finished up the system and we pretty much at this point have everything connected, all the wiring done. Um, so I'll just kind of walk through uh, the, the additions I've made. Uh, basically, we added the pump from the last video, the shutoffs. We put a mounting bracket here to support the copper pipes. Um, this thing's really solid now. Even with just this one bracket here, I mean, um, that's really all that I have supporting this. But, I mean, it's, it's rock solid. Um, this manifold really does a good job. It's not meant to be supportive, um, but just with this connected here and this one uh, bracket right here, it's very solid and there really is no need for any additional support. Um, so we went ahead and wired the pump, the circulator, uh, and that goes right into here, into the boiler. We also added the um, temperature sensor that we were describing before. So that's now taped up. Um, I like to use this, um, it's not, it looks like electrical tape, but it's actually um, pretty flexible and stretchy tape that actually sticks to itself. And it's actually good up to 500 degrees. So. Um, it won't be a problem at all. I like doing that just for a little bit of uh, insulation factor over the sensor as well as just keeping the sensor in place. It does come with zip tie, so I always zip tie the sensor on and then I just wrap it with the stuff to keep it snugged away. Um, and everything else is pretty much together. So uh, what will happen is usually when the customer comes to pick it up or I deliver it, I kind of walk through with them, um, you know, everything that they need to do on their end. And um, they, I allow them to install the expansion tank uh, depending on the type of setup. For this one, he's going to be doing that uh, part himself because this needs to be able to fit in the truck and slide this uh, entire panel in the bed. And if the expansion tank was uh, sticking down, could be banging around in there. So just, uh, it'll, it'll help him uh, hanging on the wall a little easier too. Then he can just mount the expansion tank. Um, and that's pretty much it. So that is another complete uh, build. And this again was a a 110,000 BTU single zone uh, system. And if you guys got any questions or anything, um, just leave any comments. And if you're not following, um, subscribe to our channel and like this video as well. And just keep looking ahead for other ones. Uh, for every system I built, I'll, uh, I'll just keep doing a new video to keep you guys updated. All right, guys, see ya.